Welcome to this developer tutorial on how to create a space themed Instagram effect. So my name is Jeff and I'm a developer in the creative technology department at the mill. And here we create a lot of cool and cutting edge experiences. This would of course include a lot of augmented reality and virtual reality applications. One of the more accessible forms of this includes AR effects on social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. So, for this year's Creative Technology Week, we wanted to create an AR effect that was special to this event. And we decided to do something that we've never done before. Ask the public for ideas on what to create and put those top ideas to a public vote. Thank you to everyone who participated in this. We got a ton of incredibly creative ideas. And the winning idea is, send me to space, which we're all super excited about. Now, we didn't have a lot of time to create this effect, only about a week or so, but we pulled together a team of extremely talented designers, producers, and developers, and began to come up with a rough user journey and a style board for our effect. We know we want the user to start on Earth and end up in space, and we want to include some sort of space travel effect in between. We also thought it'd be cool for the user to wear a space helmet with a visor and to trigger the space travel with a simple head nod that would close the visor and send the user blasting off into space. So our designers got to work and came up with some incredible assets for us to incorporate into the effect. For this video, I'm gonna be taking these assets and walking you through how this effect was made in Spark AR. I hope this tutorial inspires you to make your own augmented reality effects and gets you excited about what the future of creative technology will bring. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start by creating a new project. I'm going to use face tracking. So with the face tracking template, it adds a face tracker into your scene. So you see here how it's tracked to the face. We're going to start adding objects to this face tracker. So I'm going to start importing some assets. I'm going to import this FPX, which is the helmet. And I'm just going to drag that into Face Tracker. So you see here, we have something that resembles a space helmet. But what's missing are the textures. So let's go through each of these meshes and add a new texture instead of using this default gray material. So I'm just going to do that really quick. I'm just going to set this as the helmet interior mat. Okay. Oh, and then I also forgot the visor. So I'm going to create a new material for the visor. And then these three meshes are actually going to share the same material. They're all going to be metal. So I'm just going to create a metal material that all of these will share. Cool. So now all of these meshes have their own material. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on each of these materials 
to get it to look more like the reference images and to look more like a helmet. So one thing to note is that we're going to set all our, of our materials as physically based materials. That way we get this cool reflection on our mesh. So with the helmet, I know that we have actually a texture that we'll be using for the base color. So let me just import that in. And then in the helmet material, I'm going to replace this with the texture. And you see now we already have this nice texture appearing on the mesh. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with some of these surface parameters to get it to look a little bit, bit more realistic. So I'm going to set this up. I'm also going to turn this up a bit. Oh, and then I also want to make sure that I check environment so that we get this um, environment reflection HDRI on the helmet as well. So for that, I also have a file that I need to import in. And all of these files you're going to be able to find in the project um, that we uh, have supplied for you. I think it's this HDRI. So I'm going to import this in. Yep, here it is. And go back to the helmet material and just set the texture as this HDRI map. And there we go. It's looking pretty good. I'm also going to move this a little bit further back. So it looks a little bit more like it's on the head. Cool. So that looks good for the helmet. Um, let's also work, let's do the metal material now. So that's going to be these um, antenna looking things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to 100% and I'm going to set this to around 50. So that's already looking quite metallic. And I'm going to make sure also to check the environment box. And that's looking pretty good. Very metallic. Oh, let me make sure I save this project. So I'm just going to save it into here. OK, so now I'm going to work on the tubing, which actually I think that we don't need the tubing. The tubing can just be metal as well. Here we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to get rid of the tubing mat. Helmet interior is just going to be pretty much dark. And I'll show you. Let me rotate this up. So the reason why we have this visor rotation null is so that we could eventually rotate the visor so we can do a um, cool nod your head effect where the visor is going to close after you nod your head. Um, so yeah, we see the interior now. Um, and what I'm going to do is just update this interior by making it a bit darker, not too dark. And I'm also going to boost the metallicness and the roughness a bit. 
I mean, you're not going to really see the interior that much. We're eventually going to put a face mesh in here. But yeah, just so um, it's more integrated with the scene, I'm just going to make it dark on the inside. Cool. And now let's do the gasket. So the gasket is going to be this thing right here around the, um, the opening of the helmet. So for this one, I believe we also have a texture. So let me just import that in. Yep, we have this normal. And I think that's it. So for the gasket, what I'm going to do is um, make sure that normal is checked. I'm just going to set the normal for this. So you already see like kind of some nice detail on the the gasket and then uh let's see i think i also have a diffuse map so let me see if i can find that here it is let's rename this gasket diffuse and let me replace the texture under albedo with gasket diffuse. And you see here now it's really starting to, to come alive. Um, I think we'll go for a little bit more of a metallic color. So let me set this to be a little darker as well. That's pretty good. Cool. So that's that. Um, helmet's starting to look pretty good. Now we just need to focus on this visor. So let me reset the rotation. And let's focus on how this visor is going to look. Um, before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a face mesh. So I'm going to add object, face mesh, insert. And if we hide this visor, you'll actually see there's now a face mesh inside. When I press play, it tracks to the face as well. So what we need to do is we need to get the person's face on this mesh. So in order to do that, we'll have to create a material for this mesh. And I'm just going to call this face mesh mat. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is if we go to this face tracker, you should see, uh, this method called texture extraction. And basically what that does is it takes out the, the face, um, and extracts it into a texture that you can use on materials. So I'm gonna set this as the face tracker. And you see now we have the person's face on the mesh. Um, I'm going to set this to flat for now. And another thing I want to do is I want to make sure that, uh, where is it? Um, in the face mesh, I want to make sure to check off eyes and mouth just to get rid of those holes that were there. Cool. This is looking a lot better. Let's bring back the visor. So you notice the visor isn't transparent right now, so we can't see behind it. We can't see the face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the visor material and click on this little arrow now to the texture and that's going to open up the patch editor for you it's going to create a node for the um, base color or texture of the visor and we're going to manipulate the look of this visor within the patch editor and i'll show you what what i mean in a second so um the first thing to do is let's just create a value node And let's change this to color. 
So if I drag this output of the value into base color, what's going to happen is it's going to change the visor into that color. So I can change this here and it gets reflected in the scene. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this color, but also make it transparent. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to drag this output and I'm going to create a unpack node. And this unpack node will basically take the RGB values of the color and unpack it so that we have access to the R, G, and B values. I know it says X, Y, and Z, but just know that this is R, G, and B. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pack it. So I'm packing the R value, the B, and the G value. And if I were to connect that back into the base texture, you'll see it'll give me an error. And that's because this is a vector three. And in order for it to fit into this uh, base color node, it needs to be a vector four because we also have an alpha value. Um, so if I drag that in, you'll see it's actually completely transparent because the alpha value is zero. And if I set that to 0.5, then it becomes slightly more opaque. But what I want for this visor is I actually want the center to be transparent, but the outer edges of the visor to be um, slightly more opaque. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thing called SDF, which is sign distance field, which is a neat feature that Spark AR has, and it allows you to use different shapes like circles, ellipses, ellipses polygons to, to create cool effects. So I'm going to use an ellipse for this. And the reason I'm using an ellipse is just because this kind of has like a sort of eyeball shape to it. I'm going to take this SDF shape and create a smooth step node. And then after the smooth step, I'm going to connect that to a mix node. And that's going to interpolate between two values based off of an alpha value. And I'm actually going to connect this to the alpha instead of this value. Um, cool. And then I'm going to drag this over into here. And you'll notice that nothing's really happened yet. It's actually completely invisible. Um, and that's because both of our uh, values in the mix patch are zero. So let's set this to 0 0.15. So that's slightly, um, just slightly transparent. You can still kind of see the color coming through and then so that's going to be our min um, opacity and then let's make 0 0.75 our max opacity um, and you'll notice that nothing has happened that's because we need to adjust these uh, min and max values for the smooth set so let's make the 0 0.1 here we go so you see this nice gradient in transparency here. And the SDF feature of Spark AR allows us to, to do that. In fact, if I make this zero, you'll see the edge is much sharper. Um, we don't have this, this smoothing applied. So that's, the, that's actually the ellipse that we've created using these values. Um, so let me just turn that back to 0 0.1. And let's make, let's change this color. Um, let's go for like an orange color. Let's make it slightly darker. 
Okay, cool. Um, so we'll continue to, you know, refine the look of this as we as we progress along. We'll start adding, you know, lights to the scene and things like that. But for now, this is this is looking pretty good. So you might notice that the face mesh is still not um, showing up, and that's because we need to sort of reorganize this a bit. So uh, I'm going to move the face mesh up here and that will just change the, the rendering. Um, so now we can we can see the face mesh. But um, another thing that we could do is just start creating layers for everything. Um, so I'm going to put the face mesh in its own layer. Just call this face mesh. And then I'm going to leave everything on this layer. In fact, let me just call it default. And then for the visor, I'm going to create a new layer for that. So this is going to be the visor layer. And so with layers, we're able to more easily adjust how things are, are rendered. Um, so yeah, that's looking, looking pretty good. OK, so the face mesh is a bit too bright. And it doesn't look like it's in a helmet just because there aren't really any shadows or anything. So let's try to get this to be more integrated into, into the scene. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the face mesh material. And we're actually going to create a shader asset for this. So if you go to shader type, and shader asset and let's create a patch asset so you see it'll change the the material and now we have to use this patch asset asset to um, adjust how the face mesh will look so let's open up the patch editor um, and first things first, let's just take these nodes that we have here from our visor and just group that into a comment. So I'm going to say visor transparency, just so we have it nice and organized. And I'm now going to drag this patch asset into the patch editor. And if you click on this little um, icon here, it's going to expand the patch asset. So you'll see that there's already some stuff inside here. Um, we're going to actually not use a lot of this stuff. Um, but here's what we'll do first. We'll go into face mesh and Let's click on the um, arrow next to input to add it to the patch editor. So it's not letting me do that because I'm in the patch editor right now. You have to go back to main and select it again. And you see here um, we have an input node for the face mesh. And um, this input is pretty much the same as this input. We're using this patch asset right here to dictate how the face mesh is going to look just because we're now using a shader asset. Um, so now, I mean, we still want to use the face texture right on this on this material. So let's drag this face tracker texture inside the patch editor. And this will allow us to grab the RGB values of the face. Um, and if we drag that into input, you'll see that you can sort of see the, the face. And the reason why it's all um, colorful like that is because we have this these nodes within the patch asset, which we can actually get rid of. We're not going to be using these. And let's just drag input into color. And we're right back where we started. So basically now we're using the face texture as an input for this patch asset. 
and in this patch asset we're just dragging the input directly into the uh, color so um we want to add like uh a bit of uh, shadows around the the face so we kind of want to darken the edges a bit so to do that we're going to apply a gradient to this color so if you right click on the patch editor you'll be able to search through all the different patches you can use in this case we want a gradient patch so we'll add that in. And we want to connect that to a gradient step patch. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see this better. And we're also going to want to multiply this gradient by the face texture, which is going to be our input. Remember, back in the main um, patch editor, we have this face tracker texture connected to the input of the um, face mesh material, which is using this patch asset. I know it's a, a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, we'll multiply the, the face mesh or the face texture with this gradient. And let's see what we get. OK, so we've darkened the face mesh a little bit, but we, we it's not uh, exactly around the edges. So we're going to want to change this actually to circular. And it's actually doing the opposite of what we want. So we want the outside edges to be darker and the inside to be lighter. So um, let's just swap these two colors. So I'm going to make this white. I'm going to make this black. And there we go. That's looking a lot better. Um, so as you see, as you can see, the the face is looking a lot more integrated into uh, a helmet. So separate from this helmet, we also have a um, torso asset from the designer. So let's get that into the project. I'm just going to drag this FBX into here. And you see that's been imported. And then I'm going to drag this into the face tracker. So just like the helmet, um, the torso is going to need to have materials applied to it. Um, but first, let's just adjust this so that it looks like it's more matched up to where the body is. And drag this back a little bit more and drag it up. Something like that. OK, so let's start applying materials. Um, a lot of these meshes will actually share materials with the, um, with the helmet. So I know that, for example, the um, cabling will be using the gasket material. See how that looks pretty good. And then the um, tubing here is going to take the, the metal material. And I believe the rivets here are also going to be metal looking. And then for the rest of this, let's actually create a new material. So I'm just going to call this and I'm going to apply this to um, all the ones that don't have a material yet.
So um, this is looking okay. We just need to get the material of the spacesuit to look better. So I know that we have a texture for the diffuse. So let me import that in. right here this is our diffuse texture and so let's place replace this with this there we go nice and um, let's get this to match the helmet a little more so let's first off let's change this to physically based and let's increase the metallicness and the roughness of this a little bit and let's also make sure we check environment and replace the texture with this HDRI nice so that's starting to look more like one um, whole suit I'm just going to increase the metallicness of this a little more and also increase Let's roughness a little more too. That looks good. And I'm also going to move this torso forward a bit. Down. Okay. Nice. So now we have a spacesuit in our scene. Um, however, it does look a bit stiff. So next we're going to um, adjust the rotation of the torso um, so that it looks a bit more like a torso and not like it's connected to the uh, face movement so much. So let's get started on that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to get the rotation of the face. So in order to do that, let's open up the patch editor and let's drag the face tracker into the patch editor. And so that will create a few nodes for you. Um, basically, you're able to extract um, the positioning and the scale and the rotation of the face. So uh, this will allow us to sort of apply a bit of an offset to the torso whenever the the face rotates so it doesn't look so um, so rigid so the first thing we're going to do is let's grab the rotation of the face tracker and let's do an unpack node so you see here the values are constantly updating because the face is constantly moving and if we pause it you'll see that the values stop so these are the values, the rotation values of the face in the scene. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, multiply this. And then also get an exponential exponential smoothing node as well, just to make sure our animations are, are smooth and not so jumpy. And we're eventually going to pack this back into a vector 3 and apply this to the rotation of the suit. So to do that, we'll go into the suit and I'm going to drag, or I'm going to grab the... Um, the rotation here of this torso null. So if I click this arrow, it's going to add a, a node into the patch editor. And what I can do is I can drag this vector into the rotation. So you see now this isn't exactly what we what we want, but we'll get there. Um, so we're going to want to do this for pretty much x, y, and z. So just repeat what we did, multiply node, 
exponential smoothing. And then for Z, exponential smoothing. Drag that into there. And this is a little too extreme, but let's change up these values. So let's try 0 point, negative 0 point, oops, 5 for all of these. OK, it's starting to look a little better. And let's also change these default smoothing values to 50. I don't think it needs to be that high. OK. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I think we can get these values down a little bit further or actually increase it a little bit more. Let's make this 0 0.35. And yeah, let's make all of these 0 0.35 actually. Negative 0 0.35 that is. And that's looking good. Um, as you see, as you can see, there's been an offset of an offset uh, when the face moves. Um, so the suit doesn't move directly with the face anymore. So it looks a bit more natural. So actually, after playing around with the, the values a bit, um, I've decided to make this uh, first value zero, negative 0 0.15 for the x rotation, and then keep negative 0 0.35 for the y rotation, and then make the z rotation um, negative 0.25. And I think that's looking much better. So we'll keep those values as well as the exponential smoothing. And yeah, um, one thing that I do want to do is I know that I'm going to be using uh, the rotation of the face quite a bit in this effect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extract, I'm going to disconnect this rotation here. And I'm actually going to create this um, node called a sender. And this will basically kind of send off, send these values, whatever values it gets, to whatever is receiving it. So um, I'm going to also create a receiver. So every sender has a receiver. And this receiver is what I'm going to be using to uh, connect to this node. And you see here it's throwing an error. Um, and that's because this should actually be a vector three since it's a rotation. And also I want to change the name of this to face rotation. And that way, once you create a, um, a sender and you name it, you'll be able to see it in this dropdown. And I'm gonna select face rotation and there we go. Um, this is just to make our, our graph a lot more organized. Um, and I know that we're going to be using this rotation quite a bit. So instead of having to connect this to a bunch of different places, we can just have it, um, we can just create a new node called the receiver. And yeah, let me just add a comment here and let's call this suit rotation. Cool. So. Now let's add a um, opening and closing animation to the, the visor. Um, first off, I noticed that the visor rotation's a little messed up, so let me fix that. Um, there we go. So I think this is going to be our close state. And then we're going to want to rotate this this null here and that will get everything 
all of its children to, to also rotate. And then we're going to say that this is our, our um, open state. So what we're going to basically manipulate in the patch editor is this rotation value. So let's add this into our patch editor. Let's move it up here. Oops. And um, let's for now use a screen tap as a way to to trigger the the animation. So um, when the screen gets tapped, we'll play an animation. And um, so you create an animation node. And from progress, you're going to create this node called transition. And then you're going to drag this value into the rotation node. And you see that kind of messes everything up. But that's because uh, we haven't set our, our values yet. So um, what was it? I think this these were both 90. And then I believe this was like uh, like 80 something. And then this was like maybe 7.25. Um, basically, I'm just trying to get the the y values to reflect the open and closed state that we initially discovered. Um, and I'm putting this into the transition node so that when we do play this animation, it goes from um, an open state to a closed state. Uh, so let if you go over to simulate touch in this drop down right here what you're going to be able to do you'll see this white circle and you'll be able to basically simulate um tapping on the screen so yeah if we reset this or restart this scene and we tap it closes the visor um and yeah, uh, we can also get it to, to reverse. So if we drag it to reverse, we can also get to, to reverse. Um, um, but yeah, so that is the, the visor animation. And eventually what we're going to do, instead of having the tap trigger it we're actually going to use the um the head nod interaction but for now we'll just keep it as as tap just because it's easier to to debug that way um let's check out this animation really quick it's a bit slow i'm gonna change this duration to 0.5 just to make it a bit snappier and let's also instead of using a linear easing let's just use quadratic out let's see how that looks nice it's looking good cool so um i'm going to just comment this and call this visor rotation. So this really wouldn't be a space effect without some cool planets and stars in the background. So let's get started on that. We're going to add a background uh, of stars in the background, and then we're going to also add um, some particle effects that will uh, be stars um, into the scene. And then at the end, we're also going to add some additional uh, backgrounds that are going to represent the, the planets and the planet that you eventually land on. So let's get started. I'm going to close out this patch editor. Um, and we're going to start by going over to Add Asset, Search AR Library. 
uh, click on 3D shapes. And the shape that we want for our background is the higher sphere primitive. So just import that into your scene. Okay, so once that's in your scene, you should see it in your assets panel right here. And I'm just going to drag that into the focal distance. And you see it's quite small, so we're going to scale it up. Let's make it a scale of 100. So we want this to completely um, surround the, the user, right? Because it's going to represent the, the galaxy. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to this mesh and we're going to go over to material. And we're going to rename this material. Oops, it's not letting me rename it, but let me change it to a different material first. And here we go. Now we can rename it to, uh, let's name it um, Space Sky Matte. And for now, let's just set the color to be black, like the night sky. And you notice that in our preview screen, we don't actually see a black background. Um, and that's because we need to set the cold mode to front. So once you do that, that should flip the material over to to um, show within the front face of the sphere. And now another thing that we're going to have to do is uh, let's replace the the texture of this material with a material that um, we got from the designer. And this is just a pretty simple material with a bunch of stars. So this is going to be our background. So let's import that into our project. And then let's make sure to replace the texture with the uh, texture that we just imported in. Oh, and then make sure let's change this back to white. There we go. So you see now we have this cool uh, sky sphere in our scene consisting of stars. Um, however, it is looking a bit stretched or distorted. And one way to fix that would be to just have the texture uh, repeat. So in order to do that, we'll go to the stars texture that we just imported in. And if you go over to tiling mode, um, you switch it to repeat. So both for the U and the V tiling mode, we'll switch it to repeat. And this is basically gonna, going to allow us to uh, repeat this texture on whatever mesh um, we, we place it on. So. Within the material, again, um, in order for it to, to do the, the repeat, we need to make sure that we set the tiling options here. So let's just increase this and see what happens. So already we're seeing that it's starting to look a lot less stretched. Um, but we can push it a little further. Let's make it five. Nice. It's looking pretty good. Um, and I'm also just going to increase the scale of this. Let's make it a thousand. Cool. So now we have a space background in our scene. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add 
a particle system into our scene. And this particle system is actually going to be, um, they're going to be stars that are flying past you to make it appear like you're flying through space. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, go to add object. And we're going to scroll down to particle system. Insert that. And let's rename this to star emitter. In fact, let's also rename the sphere that we added to sky. So I'm going to name the mesh sky sphere and I'm going to name the parent just sky. And while we're, um, while we're doing this, let's also uh, assign these objects into their own layers. So for the sky, I'm going to create a new layer. And I want to add the children of these this object to the same layer. And so you see here, we added a um, new layer. Let's call this sky. And let's drag this all the way to the bottom. And for the star, let's do the same thing. For the star, let's create a new layer. And let's just call this stars. And let's drag it to be right above sky. OK, so um, you see we have this emitter in our scene. And we need to adjust it to make it look like stars flying past you. So how are we going to do that? Um, to do that, let's first just move it so that it's not on top of the face. So yep, let's move it just like right in front of the user right here. And um, instead of a point, let's use a plane because we want these stars to be sort of spread out. Um, and for the size of the plane, let's make it five by five. It's looking kind of like a line. Okay. Interesting. Okay, that was a weird bug. Um, so yeah, you're gonna wanna set this to be five by five, but if it ends up looking a line, just like a line, just change these values a bit and it should look more like a, a plane. And we can see that better if we just increase the birth rate. And let's also just increase the lifespan as well so that they don't disappear so quickly. So let's make this like 50. So you see now we have these these particles that are emitting from a plane, um, and currently they're they're going up, which is cool. But we want it to to appear like the user is kind of flying through space. Um, so instead of it facing upwards, let's rotate it to face the user. So I'm just gonna rotate it like that. And let's restart the scene. So yeah, that's looking better. Um, so now we have these stars flying past the user. And what we're going to want to do is also uh, assign the mat a material to this particle system. So to do that, uh, if you go to the particle system and you go scroll down to materials, just click on this plus sign and we'll create a new material. Let's rename this material to star mat. And so now we have this new material applied. Um, I'm going to make it flat. Okay. And 
Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do, we actually have a star animation um, that the designer created, and we're going to import that into the scene. And it's actually a sprite sheet. So let me import that into the project. So I'm going to drag it into the assets panel. And you see here now we have this asset called star twinkle anim, which looks like this. Um, and in order for Spark AR to recognize that this is an animation or um, a sprite sheet, we need to go to this type dropdown and set it to sprite sheet. And then we also want to make sure that the configuration is correctly. So it is a grid and there seems to be five rows. Five columns and a total of 25 sprites in this sprite sheet. Um, okay. And then for all animations, uh, you want to make sure that you're creating an animation playback controller. So if you go over to Add Asset and you click on Animation Playback Controller, this is going to add. A new one to your assets. Um, let's just call this star anim. And for the animation clip, we want to set it to. Oh, my apologies. This actually is not correct. Let's delete that. Instead of a animation playback controller, what we're going to want to import in is a animation sequence. So you import animation sequence in and let's call this star anim. And for the texture, you're going to want to select the star twinkle anim sprite sheet that we just imported in. And this looks fine. Uh, we want to loop. Um, and then, yeah, so after that's all done, your animation should be in your project. And if you go back to the star material uh, for texture, let's replace that with the star anim. So check that out. We now have a particle system with this cool glittery, glittering, um, twinkling star animation in the scene, which looks nice. Um, so let's play around with this particle system a little more. Um, so I'm going to tweak some of these values. Uh, I think there's a bit too much right now. So I'm going to decrease the birth rate make it 50 and let me restart it to see what that looks like it's also quite slow so i'm going to change the speed of the particle system to one that looks nice that's better um and also, I think they're a bit too small. So let's increase this to 0 0.05. See how that looks. Let's restart it. It's looking better. Um, they're all looking kind of the same right now. So I'm going to add some variation to the scale. Uh, so I'm going to set this to 15%, and that should just uh, vary up the scale of the the particles to give them some more um, uniqueness. And then let's also just add a bit of a spin to it, so they're not all rotated similarly. So I'm just going to make this 90 to spin, and then I'm going to set this to also 15. <clears throat> So we see now the, the stars are kind of spinning 
um, as they're being emitted. So that's kind of a neat effect. I think I like how this looks. Um, cool. So yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. Um, let me also just turn the the warm up on and let's set this to 30 seconds. Nice. Another thing I'm noticing is when a star um, is in front of the the user, it has this weird masking issue. So uh, in order to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the star material. And I'm actually just going to check off um, under advanced render options. I'm just going to check off right to death buffer. And that should fix it. So we'll no longer have the stars um, overlaid on top of the, the user. So that's looking a lot better. OK, so the next thing we want to do is add a, a space backdrop, or actually a planet backdrop, to um, the scene. So I know our designer created an asset for us to import in. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to drag this into our assets panel. And this is called Landscape 01. So we drag that into our scene. It looks like it's just a series of planes that we'll be using as our, our space backdrop. Um, so I'm going to move this back a little bit. I think right there is fine. And let me turn off the particle system so we can focus on this backdrop. OK, so um, for each of these planes, we're going to want to create our own its own material. Because I have uh, textures also from the designer for each of these planes. So um, let me do that. OK, so now that we have materials for each of these planes, um, let's set them all as flat. And let me start importing the textures in. So for landscape 01, I know that I have this texture. I also have, let me just import all the textures in for now. Um, so I have landscape 02. I have an alpha for the landscape. And I also have a planet texture and another planet texture. So these are all from our very talented designer. Um, and then also, let me see what else. I think that's it. Um, oh, for the stars, you know what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of those. In fact, we can probably just delete these because we already have plenty of stars in the background. So I don't think we'll be needing those. But yeah, so we have a series of planes. And let's just see how um, how they look. So. If I go into the landscape 
one material i'm gonna set this to the texture given to us by the designer that's looking good and then landscape 02 and i'm going to get rid of the star materials because we're not using those planet 01 and planet 02 so I'm seeing that the landscape is actually rendering in front of the planets. So we'll need to figure out how to make the upper part of this transparent. And in fact, that's what this landscape alpha is for. So what we can do with this uh, texture is we can actually go into the material, check alpha, and then set the alpha texture to be this this texture this alpha texture that we have so let's do that for both landscape 01 and landscape 02 so now we can actually see behind so the sky is no longer um, opaque it's transparent and we can actually see the stars behind it which is nice um, however I'm seeing that the planets, which we know are there, aren't rendering um, because we haven't set the layers yet. So um, let's make sure we set the layers. So for landscape one and two, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call that landscape. I'm just going to drag that right between stars and sky. And then for planet one and two, I'm going to also create their own layer and call it planets. So I'm going to drag that right between landscape and sky. And there we go. We have our planets in. The uh, red planet I'm noticing is a bit far to the right. So I'm just going to go in and adjust the position of it. So that's more in view. Just gonna drag that off. That looks pretty good. And let me save that. So yeah, now we have our our backdrop in. So this will be our destination, I guess. So once you're traveling through space, at the end of the of the user journey, you'll end up on this planet. Okay, so now that we have all of our elements in the scene. We have, let's see, the the planet background in. We have our um, our skybox in with all the stars, and then we also have our star emitter. So these are all the essential components of our of our scene. Um, and now we want to start setting up the user journey. So the way it's going to work is um, the user is going to start on Earth. So they're going to have their normal background. And then what's going to happen is they're going to, let's restart this actually. They're going to nod their head, which right now I'm using um, touch or tap to, to trigger it. Uh, just because since we're using these... Um, the videos of the stock people, they don't really nod very much. So um, it's just easier to to simulate a, a tap rather than waiting for them to nod. Um, so yeah, once uh, they nod their head, the visor will snap on and then we'll have the sky fade in. And then we'll have the star particles also fade in. And then, so it gives the kind of kind of the appearance of them flying through space. And at the end of the user journey, we'll uh, fade this planet background in, and we'll also turn off the um, the emitter. So that's going to be our end state. Um, so yeah, let's get started with that. Uh, so first things first, let's just focus on fading in the the sky. Um, so 
the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the material that we have, Space Guy Matte. And let's also open up our patch editor. Um, so if you go to View, Show Hide Patch Editor, and let's just open this up a bit. So let's see, um, here is our, our trigger. So we're using screen tap, if you recall. And um, so in our space sky material, what, what we're gonna wanna grab is this texture. Um, so right now it's currently set as stars, which we wanna keep in mind because we'll be using that texture in our patch editor. Um, but if you click on this arrow, it's going to create a patch for you. And we're going to manipulate this patch to have it do what we want, which is to fade in once the um, interaction has been completed. So we have this material, this diffuse, and we want to connect it to the star's texture. So we ev eventually want to use this, right? Um, and we want it to fade in. So uh, we'll have to add in an animation patch to drive this, this fade in. And then um, from progress, let's drag that out and let's add in a transition node. So this will allow you to transition from one state to another and you're able to select uh, which variable type it should be. So in this case, since we want to um, fade in the opacity, it's just going to be a number. And uh, 0 to 1 works, actually. So we'll go from 0 opacity to 1. Um, and yeah, so uh, we're going to want to update the opacity of this. Here, let me zoom in a bit. Make it more readable. We want to update the uh, alpha value actually of this texture. So we want to grab the RGBA and unpack this. So the reason we're unpacking this is because really we only need the RGB values, and then the alpha values is actually going to be driven by the animation. So Let's also add a pack node. And if I drag all of this in, R, G, and B, and connect it to the material, you'll see it's going to throw an error just because this um, diffuse node requires a RGB A um, input. So we actually need a vector 4 for this. And so this vector that this um, this input that we just added, it's going to be taking its value from the animation. So it's going to go from zero to one, and that's going to update the alpha of this diffuse. And so yeah, let's check. Let's uh, test that out. So I'm going to grab this screen tap and just drag the uh, gesture state to play. So once I tap this, once I tap the screen, it should play this animation. So let's try that out. Cool. Yeah, and if you recall, we also have the, we also have the, um, the visor rotate on screen tap as well. So oh, let me move this a little bit. Let's check that out, check that out again. Um, I think I want to add a bit of a delay before um, the stars fade in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag from screen tap and add in a delay node. 
and then I'm going to drag this output to play. And let's add a delay of just one second. So screen is tapped, visor comes down, and then this should fade in. Oops. The um, sky should fade in right after. So let's try that out. Cool. It's looking good. Um, one thing that I am noticing is that the um, the stars in the sky are kind of warped again, so they're they're stretched out, and that's because we um, we're using this uh, the patches to set up the material texture. And so in order to have the, the tiling back in again, what we're going to have to do is um, from, this, from this texture patch, we're going to need to drag a texture transform patch. So let's add that. And then let's drag that into the unpack patch. So um, we're going to transform this texture in order. And if you recall, we had to make the um, texture repeating or tiled in order to, to get there to be um, more stars in the sky and for it to look less uh, stretched out. So um, let's set, I think this needs to be 0. point two in order to have it look like how it was yes yep it's 0 0.2 um and yep that's looking pretty good so let's let's play that back again visor comes down and sky fades in cool um so let's organize these nodes a bit Okay, and I'm gonna call, I'm gonna comment this, and I'm just gonna call this sky fade in. I'm just gonna drag that over here. All right, so the next thing we want to happen is we want the particles to fade in, right? So instead of having it just, I mean, we could just have it, you know, be set to uh, visible once the sky is done fading in, right? But that kind of, that doesn't look that great because it just kind of appears on. And I think what would be nicer is if it sort of fades in just like the, the sky box does. So let's not do that. I'm gonna get rid of those nodes. Um, Let's do a fade in again. So uh, let's go into the material, star mat, and basically do what we did to the skybox. We just need to grab the texture and add in an animation patch. From the progress, we will connect it to a transition patch. Here, let me. Let me make this a little larger. And let's make sure to switch this to a number type. And then um, let's make some more room for, for us. And then remember, the, um, the texture that we're using for this is actually this animation sequence here. So. What you can do is you can drag the animation sequence in and that will create a patch for you. And yeah, we're gonna want to unpack this. 
and then create a pack patch. Drag in the RGB values into this pack patch. And then remember this pack type has to be a vector four so that we get the alpha value from the animation. And then we drag that right into our diffuse. So that should cause the, um, the particles to fade in. So let's check that out. Um, I'm just going to drag this screen tap over to play. Let's restart and let's see what happens. So I tap, visor comes down, background fades in and nothing happens. So let's see what's going on. Um, let's see. Oh, it's because I don't have this on. So let me change that to visible. Okay, some, I'm seeing something weird going on. So let's try this out again. Tap the screen. Yeah, that's looking kind of unusual. Um, so let's dive into this. Uh, I know that the, okay. So I know that this, this texture that we're using has an alpha channel associated with it. So that's probably why it's causing, why it's looking like this. Um, so what we need to do actually is we actually need to use this alpha value from the texture and we need to multiply that by the alpha value that we're grabbing from the animation. So in order to do that, we actually need to change this to a vector four unpack. That way we can get this alpha value out. And then from that, we're going to create a multiply patch. And then what are we going to multiply to this? Well, we're going to multiply the animation value to it and then drag that output into our pack patch. So immediately we see that our twinkling animation is back in. Um, and let's actually see it fade in. And let's just make sure that works too. So I tap, visor comes in, comes down, and yep, background fades in, particles fade in. Um, I want to add a little bit of a delay uh, for when the particles come in. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, um, I think after, so after our sky fades in, what we're going to do is we're going to fade in the particles. So, um, in this animation patch that we have for the sky fading in, we can actually, um, drag this node from completed into the play, um, input of our animation patch. So basically what will happen is once this animation is completed after a duration of one second, um, it's going to play our particle fade in. So let's see if that works. Let me restart. Nice. Okay, cool. So now we just need to clean up our, our nodes a bit. Um, yeah, I like to do this as, as much as possible just so you can sort of keep everything organized because, you know, things can get kind of crazy looking. Um, so yeah, it's important to just sort of get rid of any nodes that you're not using. Um, so maybe you are like testing some things out or whatever, and you know, you just want to make sure that everything looks very clean and, and organized so that if someone else needs to jump into your project, then they'll be able to easily kind of find where they need to um, make updates or, or fix things. So this is going to be our star particle fade in. The capitalization kind of, I get very anal about. Um, okay. So yeah, this is looking good. So we have, we're kind of having, we're building out, um, you know, the sequence of events in our user journey. 
We have um, user nods their head, um, which is temporarily going to be just screen tap for now. And then visor uh, comes down on the user's head. And then after the visor is on, then we, um, we fade in the sky and we fade in the particles. So yeah, that's looking great. Now, after uh, all of these elements have faded in and the user has you know, traveled through space for a little bit, we're going to want to fade in this planet backdrop, right? So um, let's get that into the patch editor. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. And let's kind of order this based off of sequence of events. So visor rotates, um, sky stuff fades in after a second. And then we want this landscape backdrop to fade in. So I want you to like take a second to think about, you know, after doing all of this, what are we going to do next? You know, we're going to pretty much do the same thing, right? We're going to have to take the diffuse of all of these materials and just connect them to a animation patch. Um, so yeah. And then we also want to make sure we, you know, use these um, textures in our patch editor as well. So let's Get our diffuse first. Um, we'll start with landscape one. So if you go into the material, click on the texture arrow, and that will create your your uh, patch. Actually, let's just do all of it at once. Let's just keep grabbing all of the diffuses for each of these. And then Okay, cool. And um, I know we're gonna also be using we're gonna be using these these texture these textures as well. So let's drag these in. Oop. Okay, I have a feeling we're going to need some more space, so I'm just going to move all of this up a bit. Okay. All right, so um, let's create our animation patch. And we'll drag out from progress a transition patch. Make that into a number. And that's going to be our alpha value, right? And um, all this is going to get triggered by the screen tap. But uh, let's let have the user kind of spend some time traveling through space. And then we'll fade in the, the uh, backdrop. So uh, we're going to create a delay of, let's just say, eight seconds or so. Yeah. And then we'll play. But for now, you know what we're going to do is we're just going to have it play right after the screen has been tapped, just so we can test it out. And we don't have to wait a full eight seconds. Um, Okay, so, uh, you know, basically what we were doing before, unpack the RGBA values from the texture, and then pack it into a vector four, where we grab the alpha value from the animation. And we have to do that for 
all of these. Um, so, you know, I don't like to repeat myself. Um, and you don't have to create the same patches over and over again. And so Spark AR has uh, a cool feature where you're able to to take um, some notes. And so if I were to highlight this, unpack and pack, what I can do is I can right click on it and I can group them together. And let's just call this new group animate opacity. And what's cool about this is I'm going to be able to reuse this uh, throughout my patch editor. So um, if you right click on this grouping and you go to convert, convert to patch asset, it's going to turn orange. And that basically means that it's a reusable patch that you can use um, throughout your patch editor and even in other projects as well. So now we can just drag this patch asset into our, our editor instead of, you know, creating that pack, unpack and pack um, those patches over and over again. This makes it a lot easier. And we can just drag the animation into the second input, which is going to be our alpha. And let's just drag that into the correct material. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's see how that looks. Let's restart. Tap. And everything fades in except the landscape. Let's see what's going on. We're having it go from zero to one. I'm updating the diffuse for all of these materials. Anima animate opacity. Let me open up this node and let me just make sure it's set correctly. So we're taking RGB and then we're creating an alpha input, which outputs a vector four. Oh. <laughs> The same um, reason why the emitter wasn't working is because I didn't set this as as visible. So that's my bad. Uh, let me restart this. Tap. Yep, so everything fades in. Um, so already I'm seeing some issues. Uh, I think the, so there's like um, a background on these planets so the alpha isn't showing through so let's figure out what that's about um, and then also i noticed something kind of strange well it's all right i think if we add once we add a delay in it'll look a lot better because um it won't be in fact let's just do that right now let's just see how it'll look with the delay in so I'll add this eight second delay back in. So it's going to rotate the visor, play the fade in of the back background and the stars. And then after eight seconds, it's going to um, fade in the, the backdrop of the planet. So let's see how that looks. Hmm. So I'm seeing that, uh, yeah, the, the alpha and the layering and all that stuff is, is kind of messing up the, the particles as they're not showing through um, the planet backdrop. So let's figure this out. Um, OK. The first thing I'm going to look into is um, these the planets and the fact that they don't have an alpha associated with them. So 
Um, I'm going to go into the planet material and I think the easiest way to do this is just to create a an alpha mask. So um, if you go to alpha, you check it on and let's just set the alpha texture to be um, the planet texture. So you see now that we did that, the the um, it's gotten its its alpha back, which is great. Um, and then let's do the same for planet two. Cool. So that's looking a lot better, but um, we still have this problem where the particles aren't appearing behind the landscape, which actually shouldn't be a problem really because you know. The eventual plan is for the particles to appear. Oh, you know what? It is going to be a problem because, see, it's not. OK, yeah. You definitely need to fix that. So OK, let's see how should we fix that. Um, oh, OK, well, that was easy. Um, so if you go into the star particle material, star mat, um, and remember when we unchecked right to death buffer to, to fix um, the overlaying issue on top of the user, well, we can also uncheck use depth test, and that should fix our, our problem where it was, it's not appearing behind um, the planet backdrop. So yeah. That's a really easy fix. Um, so let's try this all again. Oh, and then another thing is, um, let's go back to our patch editor. We want the emitter to to actually go away after the the um, planet backdrop fades in. So once you land on a planet, you're no longer you know traveling through space. We don't need these stars anymore. So. Um, Let's have them fade out. So if we want it to fade out, we can just uh, send a, a signal to this reverse input. And that will basically reverse this transition. One to, it'll go from one to zero. And it will fade out the, the star material. So um, let's do that actually right here. So while this is fading in, we want the emitter to fade out. So we drag an output from the delay and put it into reverse. That should do it. Um, so let's try that out. Nice. So yeah, after eight seconds, the the user lands on the planet and the backdrop fades in. Great. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, instead of using the screen tap, I want to test out the head nod. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to grab the face object and if we right click on the patch editor we should be able to grab a head nod patch so this will capture when somebody nods their head which is exactly what we're looking for and you see that this node here takes in a face and so we already have the uh, face tracker here which has an output of face so just grab that and drag it into the face input. And then so on nod, what we want to do is we want to basically um, play our sequence of events, right? So we want to replace anything that's attached to this screen tap with our, our nod. Um, but I don't really like having, you know, so many wires um, attached to to one node. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create this thing called a 
sender. And I, we already created one of these um, for the face rotation. So if you recall, uh, every sender needs a name. So we're going to name this. So after the head nods, it's blast off. So we're going to name it blast off. And um, instead of, it's not going to send a number, it's going to send this thing called a pulse, which is basically a, a trigger to do something. Um, so um, let's disconnect all of the screen tap nodes. And OK, so move that over. Um, now that we have a sender, we need to start creating our receivers. So if you right click, you just have to create a receiver patch. And in this drop down, let's select blast off. And basically, any place where uh, the screen tap was connected to, we just need to make sure this blast off node is also attached to. So let's just keep creating these. And then um, oh, we need one here too. Okay. Yeah, and you see that just makes our our um, patch editor much more clean and organized, so that we don't have such long like um, what do you call these lines or whatever from from patch to patch. Um, it can just get very messy very quick. So uh, having these like sender and receivers, and also using Things like patch, patch assets and, and grouping really uh, allows you to sort of make sure things just look neat and organized. Um, OK, so uh, let's test this out. Well, actually, let's restart this. And I believe this video, yep, he sort of nods his head. And sure enough, our sequence of events goes through and then he ends up on the planet nice so the last thing I want to go over is how to test the effect on your device so if you go over to the bottom left corner you see this icon here if you click on it it'll give you the ability to either um, preview it on spark AR player which is a separate app you would need to download on your device or you could send it to either Facebook or Instagram. And for, for this, I'm just going to send it to my Instagram. And it'll take a couple seconds, but once it's there, you should be able to test it out on your device. All right, so now that the effect is on my phone, I'm going to test it out. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Cool. That's not bad for a first pass. Um, there's definitely a few tweaks we can make to, to make it look better, but I think for a first round, this is pretty good. I know this was a lot of information, so I'll make sure to include the project files in the video description below. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful and you're able to follow along. Um, please let us know if you would like us to cover anything else. Uh, reach out to us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at millchannel. And definitely give us a follow and check out all the cool stuff we're working on. Um, it's been a pleasure building this with you all. And once again, my name is Jeff Wang at The Mill. And I hope you guys all have a great creative technology week. Bye.